Today we're going to make pate en croute. I'm going to show you some really unusual techniques that I have come up with with the help of a pastry friend. We've got a twill paste here made from egg whites, flour, beetroot powder and some butter. So super classic twill paste. This is the pastry that I've already made. I've rolled it out and I'm going to imprint the twill paste onto the um, pate pastry in here. It's quite messy, hence why I wear gloves. So I want to be making sure that I'll get every hole. Taking my time not to push too hard on the twill paste and make sure that the mold doesn't rip into the pastry. This is a very delicate technique that is cropping up all over the place since I started doing it, yeah. All right, so pretty close now. I wanna do a double check. Probably only taken a couple of minutes to get to this stage, but it's uh, an important one to, to get right. After carefully spreading this over the whole mold onto the pate, now's the part where you have to be really careful. And I know there's been a lot of questions asked on how to do this. Well, this is how you do it. This is a two-sided mold. One side has got an edge that will stick into the pastry. And as you can see, I'm pulling this up and we're getting this beautiful pattern. There's lots of different ones you can do, lots of different shapes, lots of different colors, but this is what I chose to do today. The reason I've got this on a piece of parchment paper is to be able to pick it up because if you try and pick it up when you've got all of these beautiful little red molds going on then it becomes um, really tricky so I'm going to take this now I'm going to chill it down for about 20 minutes and we're going to line the pate with it so I'm going to make the ribbon that's going to go right across the top of the pate which is going to hide where the pastry is going to be smudged from the twill paste um, it's an inevitable seam that can't be um, avoided. So this is gonna hide that. So really simple, three pieces of pastry cut into roughly the same size. Gonna stick them together. One, two, three, like so. And then I'm just gonna <coughs> go from outside in and make a nice uh, ribbon. So boom, over. The first one always starts a little bit like so, which I'm going to lose. And now we've got our pattern going, it will make sense. So over, you can get as fancy as you want with these. I'm just going to keep it pretty simple today. And then as it gets to the end, I like it to get a little bit tighter, just for the effect I like. And then that's it. You get this really cool decorative piece that's going to hide all of my smudges on the pastry. So I'll leave this to chill down and we'll be all set. Chimneys, I've cut out these little circles. These are going to vent the pate, um, but they need another little circle in the middle. So I use the end of a sausage press. I'll just gently pop these out. Take a little knife, pop these out, super easy. Really important that the pastry is cold, otherwise you will end up with uh, pieces that are not circular. Colder the pastry, the better. And these will get chilled down and go on, again, the top of the, uh, top of the pate to hide some of the decorations and to also make it look easy. 
All right, so the tricky part. Um, largest pate on croup mold, lined with just a little oil. Getting this in there, the way I like to do this, it's on the parchment. We've got to pick it up, take it off the parchment, trying not to smear the decorations we've made. Put it down, goes over there, boom. Now I need to flip it without destroying the pattern. So I'll do this really gently, using the edges up here where it doesn't matter if it's gonna get smudged because they're gonna get cut off. Turn it over gently, over, pick it up, and gently drop it in here. Now it's in, so now the key is to be really gentle here and make sure the twill paste, the circles are staying circular. Gentle does it here. The pastry we make here, it's uh, quite time consuming to make. Very unusual pastry. Eight egg yolks, lots of flour, lots of butter. Sometimes we put beef or pork fat in it. But this is now lined at one end here. So I'm gonna take these two pieces, which I've already cut out. You can put decoration on the ends here, but <clears throat> I, uh, I'm not doing it today, mainly because these pieces get cut off and you won't see them anyway. So I'm lining both pieces with egg yolk. Think of egg yolk as being a glue. I'm gonna slightly bend it and I want the egg yolk side to touch the rest of the pastry here. So go in. And the end pieces are the least important part of the pate because they're gonna, they taste the best, but they're the least important because we don't serve them. So that goes in nice and tight making sure that there's no holes in the pastry here. If there's holes when you do this, it's a nightmare because you spent all this time making the fast, the pastry, the twill paste. Um, and then when you go to fill it with aspic, if there's holes here, you'll have leaky pastry, which is never good. So now you can see we've got the coffin lined. These things used to be called coffins back in the day. And now I'm gonna chill this down again so the pastry is nice and cold. And in about 10 minutes, we'll fill it. And um, we'll do the other tricky part of getting the lid on without um, destroying it. Pate on croup base is ready to go. This has got chicken livers, pork livers, duck livers, ham, pistachio, apricots, uh, confit duck. It's all been ground three times to get it really emulsified. Um, I want it to be bound really tight. I don't want a loose pate. Um, it's been sitting for about five days. Smells amazing. Um, I've got prunes and smoked squab breasts here that are gonna be the inlay. Uh, there's also cream and eggs and cognac and brandy and all these other things. But basically this is the farce. It smells so good. Um, so going in to the bottom. It's important that the pastry is cold because otherwise your fingers can crash into the sides of it and uh, tear it and rip it. You end up with a big hole in the side of the pate. So at this stage, this is what this is looking like. This is lined about a quarter of the way down. I'm now gonna take my inlay on my garnishes. I'm going to go in with prune first. So prunes kind of look like this as they go down the middle. I'm gonna now really push those down. I'm gonna take a thinner layer of, of um, the fast this time. Common mistake is to not fill these things tightly enough and you end up with big holes in the pate. It looks kind of bad. And now the prune has disappeared and we'll go in with our smoked squab breasts. So these are local squab from Mesa. They've been uh, smoked and then roasted to about 120 degrees. So they're not 
fully cooked. They're like 90% cooked. So squab breasts going right down the middle, sitting just the, about an inch above the prunes. And then there's gonna be another layer and I'm gonna push everything down really, really firm now. But being careful not to destroy the pattern on the side of the, side of the mold. Got pieces of cured ham going through here too. We've got lardo from a heritage breed pig going into it. So it's like all of the bits and pieces that um, shouldn't get thrown away, but do get thrown away, are going into this pate. I'm taking it, packing it really, really tight. So as tight as I can get it. Again, I want to do this so that there is no air gaps. If you look at the moment, there's an air gap right there. There's air gaps here. So I want to make sure that there's no air gaps from top to bottom. So when we go in to slice it, it's um, nice and uniform. I'm going to take a spatula and smooth everything down here. So really smooth everything down. Keeping the edges clear, also being cautious of the amount of time I'm spending on it. I don't want the pastry to get too warm. Always good to have cold pastry. All right, so the pate is filled up. This is what I want it to look like. Now I'm gonna do a technique that I haven't seen anywhere else. So I, something I've come up with as far as I know. Um, normally there's a lid that goes on top of this and um, that's great. I like doing that technique too, but for this to get a continuous seamless pattern, this is the only way I know how to do it. So I'm gonna trim these pieces down just a touch. This is a blunt knife. It's not very sharp at all. It's a, it's a pastry knife now. I'm just gonna trim these down here. And I'm gonna push this down nice and gently. And then I'm gonna take egg wash, my glue, and I'm gonna be creating a seam that's gonna go all the way around, and it's gonna look a little bit messy in the beginning. Then I'm gonna tidy it right up. So egg, egg wash is glue. I'm gonna take the shorter side of the two. I'm gonna egg wash the whole piece here. Doing it on this side. all the way down and I'm going to cut this a little bit short like here and it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly accurate here because this is going to be the part that goes under but you can see the pattern is still in shape which is what we want this is not usable now so from here I'm going to fold this over. Down here. And I want this to stick tightly to the fast, to the, to the pate base in here. And I'm not worrying about smudging this here. This is going to go underneath. So nice and tight. Important not to stretch the pastry. If you stretch the pastry, you're gonna end up getting cracks. So now I'm gonna fold this whole lid over, but first I wanna egg wash the whole thing. And the longer I've got this out, the more, uh, the more time there is that this uh, twill paste is gonna get warm and it's gonna smear. So. Try to work relatively quick here. So clean hands, take the edges, pop it over. So now you can see it's coming together, but there's this big line that runs down the middle here. That's intentional, and that's gonna be the part where I smear everything. And that's what that braid is gonna hide. So we're gonna squash these two together. We 
all the way down here. I'm going to take the knife, the back of the knife, and really make sure these are sealed. Because if it's going to break anywhere, this is where it's going to want to break. Pushing down. Again, not worrying about the pattern being ruined here. And then tuck these edges in down here. And the same thing here. So creating that seal all the way down. Don't want this to split after doing all this work. The other side of the pastry is about here. So I've got, given myself a good inch of like protection from splitting the pastry. Okay, so it's looking good, but it looks messy down here. So that's intentional. And I'm gonna tidy that up right now. All right, so the braid I made earlier to disguise my slightly messy edge here. I'm gonna take some egg wash and I'm gonna go gently along here. The reason I say gently is I don't wanna smear the pattern of the uh, twill paste. So nice and gently. You can thin the egg wash out. This is just egg yolks. Some people use eggs, whole eggs. I like the color of just egg yolks. So going down here, we're gonna take this, we're gonna plonk it right along here. I'm gonna push it down. Check in to see where I wanna be cutting. I wanna give myself a little bit extra, little trim. Lose that piece. Same down here. And from here, I'm gonna take these and squish them down all the way. Making sure to hide that pattern. And then I'm just gonna stick these in here, right under the lid, the side of the mold. They're gonna squeeze down in here. Just like that. Same down this end. I want to make sure this is nice and tight. All the way down. Now we've got it looking like this. And again, I've started off thick and I've gone thin just because I like it. Depends, you know, lots of different ways of getting where you're going. Um, at this stage, I don't have any concerns for it. I think it looks exactly like what it should look like. So happy with here. We now got a cut. Five holes, I think, should be plenty on this one. So, I'm gonna take a small knife like this. I'm gonna roughly measure the, the center and the ends. I'm not gonna get a uh, tape measure out and measure it. I have done that before, but I don't see the point. I can do it with my eyes. So I'm just gonna cut a circle here. Pop it out, a little garbage pile, and go roughly down the same same size at the other end. Now I'm gonna roughly find the middle, right about there, right down the middle. And these are important to let the steam out as it as the pastry cooks. If you don't, you'll have pastry that will just explode basically and everything will pop up for it and be more like a meat pie so i've got three holes roughly now i'm going to come down here dig, dig, dig. right about there cut this guy so now i've got the pastry with the holes in looks a little bit scruffy so really easy to tidy these up 
the pieces we cut earlier. Gonna go on here. Final little pieces, I'm gonna I've added about a teaspoon of cream to the egg yolks and I'm gonna gently go across the pastry, not being firm on the twill paste. I don't wanna smudge it, I wanna keep it looking nice and sharp. So if you use just egg yolk on this, it will be too thick. So just a little bit of cream to thin it out. Nice. It's important again that it's cold, if it's warm, it's gonna smear. Again, gently. Once one or two of these start to smear, the whole thing will go red. And it looks, uh, not like what it should look like. But this is looking great. This is looking great. So this is also acting as a glue. So now that I've got that there, now that I've got the egg yolk on, I'll take my little chimney lids that I cut earlier and I'll just plop those right on top. Choose the best ones. Better. Always cut an extra few just to make sure it's a good one there. Could be for the next one. So looking good, making sure these are tight. You'll notice that if I push down on the pate, there's a gap there. There's a little of about that much room from the pastry touching the pate. That's gonna give me a better chance of the pastry not breaking, because the meat's gonna souffle up about that much. So if the pastry is too tight onto the meat, you're potentially gonna get some cracks. So again now, cross all of this, making it look nice and golden. This is gonna make it go really crispy and brown when we cook it. And then this is gonna chill for another five minutes We'll get a second egg wash, which will help protect the twill paste and it'll also add color to it. So yeah, looking exactly like what it should look like now. Second coat of egg wash, gonna go on. Got my sheet tray lined with parchment paper, got the oven at the right temperature. Should be a little easier to get a coat on here now because it kind of created a glaze to go across the top. Don't want too much, don't want scrambled eggs. You do want enough to give you shine. One of the things you've got to be careful with with beetroot is the amount of sugar in it. It will go black rather than red. So I am going to get some dark color on the top of this when I bake it, but the edges are going to be beautiful red. So the top will be slightly caramelized from the sugars in the beetroot powder, which I'm totally fine with. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. All right, so the pate fully made, ready to go, looking exactly as I hoped it would look. It's gonna go in the oven on this sheet tray at about 410 degrees for about 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna drop the temperature to about 200 degrees, much lower than a lot of people cook them and we're gonna cook it till an internal temperature of 135 degrees. We'll put it in at an angle, because I like to put it in at an angle. I feel like the oven temperature gets better on here with the oven that we have. So that's it, gonna go in the oven. Set a timer. Nine minutes, check it in nine minutes. Happy days. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it's exactly what I'm looking for. So golden brown, exactly what it should look like. Um, this will continue to cook now for about another 45 minutes or so. Um, much lower temperature. You can see it's souffled up here. You can just start to see 
the red coming up, which is a quarter inch of souffle in from the meat, pushing the pastry up. If you don't have that gap, you've got a much higher chance of a break happening along here. So uh, as the oven cools down, this is gonna rest for a few minutes and then it's gonna go back in and it's gonna cook much slower and lower. And uh, that's it. I'm just gonna make some chimneys to go in here with some foil real quick. So pate from yesterday, <laughs> cooked off. It's been set overnight. Only thing we didn't see was the aspic going into it. It's made from pig's feet. Weighs about 15 pounds. First thing I'm gonna do is take the bottom off. Use the blowtorch because we don't want to wreck that pastry. Should come off nice and easy, which it does. We want to warm the edges. Nice and gently. We don't want to pull on it. We want it to come off on its own. If you pull, you're going to tear the pastry. That's not what we want. All right, so it's a little warm up on the top to make it look nice and glossy. Turn this off. And you can see this one has turned out pretty damn good. Can't really get them much better than this, to be totally honest. That's as good as we're gonna get there. Yeah. Cutting nice and straight. We've got this beautiful prune smoke squab. It's as good as it as good as I can make a pate. Yeah. See the beautiful color on that aspic up there. See the squab, the prune, pork belly, pistachios. Yeah, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> mm. Amazing. All right, fucking amazing. Yep, pate and croute, smoked squab, prune. No. Best pastry you can get. Yeah, amazing.